in my hands, in my hands is a custom deck of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Welcome to the Hunt Studio. My name is Hunter. This is an art day, a day for art. Every day is a day for art, I suppose. But today is awfully special because I'm making a very cool project, something that just kind of popped up in the nog. Um, it's actually inspired by another artist friend, uh, Peter Draws. Specifically, what he did is he made a gallery. He bought this big pad of paper and then drew a bunch of pictures, right? And he filled it up on these big pieces of paper and then stapled it all to his, uh, his fence. And then so I did the same thing. Actually, I'll show you right here. Right here, see? I did a very similar thing, just to kinda, I don't know, just to copy him, really. Just to, just to show appreciation, just to say, hey, thank you. After I did this, I just got out a Sharpie and basically burned the entire Sharpie. Maybe, I may have even burned two, two or three Sharpies. But I burned the Sharpie, and then after that, I got the idea, whoa, why don't I actually do this on a smaller scale specifically the same size as Yu-Gi-Oh cards, right? I'm doing Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I'm going to make some Yu-Gi-Oh cards right now. For the materials I'm going to be using is a piece of cardstock. Not cardstock. This is Bristol board. It is 96 pounds. 96 pounds. Um, I'm also going to be using several various different inks and watercolors and sharpies and you know ink pens dip pens just basically the whole arsenal i've actually made a video about my favorite art supplies that i use in 2021 and basically all of those all of those art supplies are going to be used in this video minus my spectrum noir alcohol based markers just because i'm going to use watercolor instead so basically everything is going to be used my entire arsenal is so much fun. This is so much fun. Um, let's get to it. I've got a lot, a lot, a lot of drawings to do. <sighs> and the reason I want to do some Yu-Gi-Oh cards is specifically, I mean, obviously, I'm right there in the in the age where when Yu-Gi-Oh came out, I was in, what, first grade? Kindergarten, first grade, whenever it came to the United States. And yeah, we got the cards. We had the cards and collected. And <laughs> funny enough, we would actually pull the cards and we would take it and we would put these cards in our pockets and show our friends. So we'd be like, oh my gosh, look at this new card I just got. Take it, boo, pocket that thing, run to the classroom and pull it out and be like, look what I got. And of course this card was all bent and crooked and just mashed together. So we didn't understand the preservation of these things. Actually now they're worth a lot of money. Fortunately, Oh, uh, fast forward a little bit and probably about five years ago, four or five years ago, I actually started getting back into the game and started playing competitively. And as far as competitively goes, I didn't really play a very competitive deck, <laughs> so I didn't win very much, but I had a whole lot of fun with it. And that's what it was all the ways about for me. It was just having fun with a card game, some nostalgia, and just having fun with it. Uh, and today, I actually don't have a whole lot of... Um, Oh, so what a friend of mine and I are actually doing, Rico, you've seen a picture, you've seen a little, he's been low-key featured in the videos. The Rico and I are buying and selling, investing in cards. We're doing this whole, we've got a little small business going on. We're investing in cards and stuff and just kind of doing the thing. Uh, it has, it's very small, very humble right now, but while I'm at it, um, I don't have any cards with me right now. So I'm just gonna make some. Yeah, I'm gonna make some. Side note, I want to give a little shout out to my boy Big Sam, right? Big Sam Studio on YouTube, the whole thing. He made this shirt. Boop. He made the shirt, I bought the shirt, and it's a good shirt, right? It's actually the same quality, the exact same t-shirt that I printed mine on. So it was really cool, similar quality. Exact same thing. Very good. Very good. So, go support your, your, your growing artists, right? Go check out his video, his channel. 
The t-shirts are sold out, and I'm sure he'll come out with some more something sooner or later. To talk about the project specifically, as far as the background, as far as like the greens and the pinks and the oranges that you're seeing right now on the screen, and the blues and the blacks and the other colors that I used on the other ones, um, I used several, a couple of different methods for each one. Uh, for the colorful ones, the, the, green, the one you're looking at right now and the, the other colorful one, I used watercolor. Right, I just used some watercolor and dipped it in a brush, got some good water in there, dipped it around, played around with it, just had fun with it. As far as the blue one and the black one, and the gray and all, that one, those two, were ink. And what I did is I had a cup of water and ink and two brushes, and I did, would dip one in the brush, one brush in the water, and then another brush in the ink, and just kind of have them together and just boop, 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 just rub them all, like, rub it all the way around, and it kind of made this cloudy effect. And it, it ended up being really cool. It's something I've done for about a year now, and something that I got from Carl Kopinski. Carl Kopinski, if you don't know who that is, you should know if you're into art at all. Check out Carl Kopinski, all right? So, and then... As I started tackling these drawings one at a time, I would either, you know, it took two weeks to draw, so I was in several different moods, several different mindsets for each one. So I didn't just crank them all out in four hours and just haul booty. So it was, it was over the course of a good while. So the mood would change. Um, you know, the first several were very intricate, very small. You know, I took a lot of time doing some of them, and I just kind of had fun with it. Uh, towards the end, though, I definitely, definitely got sick of this project and was ready for it to be done. So I would just get, like, my chunkier art supplies, like Sharpies and paint pens and things of that nature, and even, like, acrylic paint. I just, the last one, I just dipped some acrylic paint and just started slathering it on there and just, you know, I was ready for it to be done. And, you know, it, it, it ended up being cool. Um, you get to see, with there being 60 different drawings, you get to see lots of different, like, styles of mine. You know, like, different, I have different moods, and I do different things in different moods. So, you get to see a lot of that in this one project, which is really cool. This project... It's taking way longer than I thought it would. Specifically, it's taken about two weeks. <laughs> I've started it two Mondays ago, I think. And then from Monday to Saturday, and then Saturday, and today's Saturday again. So it's been about two weeks. And uh, I'm ready to get this done. And to be honest, I haven't put... Let's see. I'm about three quarters of the way done. And I still have to slice this is the third one the third page i've done i have to slice it up and then i have to draw the lines and i have to name them all and then i have to fortunately i've i've already colored this so i have to write the the hunt studio on the back date it and all and then after that one more one more and this project will be done it'll be wrapped up i've actually got to go to the store Eventually today, I think after I finish drawing all of these, I think there's 16. Yeah, there's 16. And after I finish drawing all of these, I'm going to go get some card sleeves from the store and sleeve these bad boys up and call it done. Cutting with the box blade is a very tedious process. Cut and stack and cut and stack and cut and stacks and keep doing it till it's all cut and stacked. I'm gonna draw the border next, right? I'm gonna draw a black border around here and how I'm gonna achieve that is by taking this thick piece of cardboard here and a much thinner piece of paper on the bottom. I'm just gonna simply butt this up Right, butt it up to it, take my Sharpie, keep it nice and straight, 
and just pow. Draw a line. And that one's a little wobbly. It's okay though. Turn. That one hopped on me a little bit, but that's okay. This one ended up being a little bit sloppy. But now we've got a border. So you can see I missed. I'll just make it look more intentional. Bam. And then that skipped a little bit. Right there. Just skipped. Skip, 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 skip. But that's okay. So we've got a border. Right? We got the car, we got the drawing, we got the border. So the back is gonna get the same treatment, right? So we're gonna do this thing up real nice and easy. So we're gonna sign it with my signature and just put the Hunt Studio and we'll put 20, 21. Bam. And this is with a metallic Sharpie, right? So you got the card. We're still gonna name it. So I'm just gonna get a gold jelly roll pen, right? Just a metallic ballpoint pen, and I'm gonna name it. Um, what shall we name it? We're gonna keep it real simple. Clown boy. I'm not gonna get too crazy with the names here. Clown boy. Right, so now this card is 100% complete. We just gotta sleeve it up. And once we sleeve it, it'll be good, it'll be done. Here is the final drawing, or the final page for the drawings. And here I'm just slathering on some some acrylic paint because I'm just sick of it at this point I'm trying to get this thing over with quickly and effectively They actually ended up turning out really cool though Okay, I went to the store and bought Some things right so I went and got this little deck box and also Some sleeves Yes, some sleeves so this is the final thing. This is the final thing for this project. To make this project complete, this is it right here. So I went ahead and got some clear sleeves, right? So they're clear. The back is matte. The front is nice and shiny. So we're gonna take this, put it here. And if my math was correct, these fit almost perfectly. Let's see. Yeah, look at that. So this right here is a final product. This is a final product. In these matte sleeves or these Dragon Shield clear matte sleeves that's it right there i just made some Yu-Gi-Oh cards oh my gosh i just completed ah this feels so good this is so cool man this is amazing oh my gosh i just made a deck of cards so i just sat there and made some cards man this two week long project all of a sudden, after it's done, after it's said and done, I get to sit here and just look at the cards. It's just, it makes it so worth it. Like I, I, I was playing it like I was, wasn't wanting to do it towards the middle, towards the end of it. I was like, ugh, really don't want to do this. But now that it's done, it's, oh my gosh. It's so much, it's so cool, man. It's so cool. I've got to show you, right? So I've got to, I'm gonna sit here and flip through each one and I'm gonna do a top down and like and then flip the room, right? So you can so you can see what's up. So you can see the card. Okay, rather quickly, I'm going to filter through these, do a quick little flip through because this video has gotten to be 
kind of long. So I'm just going to one, just going to show you the cards, right? Get you a good look at them. All right. So we got the Eye of Truth. Jaeger. Saber. Senpai. Oh. Senpai. Abstract Astronaut. The Looker. Bliss Boy. Clown Boy. Eva Unit 17. Wald Wendigo. Assassin. Obedient Glutton. Android Darkness. Forbidden Fruit. Ghoul of the Fall. Whoop. Octo Slime. Terror Embryo. And Terror Hatched. Kind of. Some of the shapes ended up looking similar, so I went ahead and did some like some pairs, such as Jube and Juby. <laughs> Flow state. Ghost shooter. There was actually a series of, of them that all looked like bugs. As ironically, though, I don't like bugs. So I didn't name that one, though. I got sharpshooter. They all kind of look similar. Butterbug. And this one's a bit of a stretch, but Timid B. Rowdy Rooster. Bent Whale. Come on. Focus for me. Bent Whale. Peaceful Pup. Misa. Yomp Charmer. A little weird looking dude there. There's a little play on words. Golden Duck. The Old Crow. <laughs> Bumby. <laughs> oh, I love this guy. He's so funny looking. Licking Lizard. Gator bait. Violent visitor. Grip of fate. The beauty within. This actually is the very first one that I named. And then it just kind of, the name kind of came to me. And then once I named it, I was like, yo, we're naming all of them. Sydney. Rigid Platform. Oval Forest. Spear of Lust. And some of them I kept very, very simple. Such as... This thing looks like some body secretions here. Blades versus Pancakes. Carnival of Celebration. Treasure Trove. Focus. Focus, Boyle. There you go. Treasure Trove. Unicorn Dungeon. I really like this one. And it turned out. Mind Boggle. Absolution. Cloak. 
London Bridge. Nader. It's a tornado, there, boy. Trash wind. Strong arm. Silent scales. Robots of gold. Doll armies. Ghouls of beyond. And finally, the last card, doppelganger. I hope you enjoyed watching me make these things. I hope you enjoyed, I hope it brings you some like nostalgia, right? Because, I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, right? Hopefully, this is something that just kind of sparks interest. Also, here's the thing. I'm willing to trade with these, right? I'm willing to take these, and if you also make some cards, I will trade with you. You can contact me via Instagram, right? And you can DM me, and you can message me about your cards, show me your cards, and we'll trade cards. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much. Check, follow me on all the, all the, <sighs> this was so much better yesterday. I lost all the footage. So subscribe to this channel. Do the thing. <sighs> Thank you for watching. Follow me. Support your local, local? Support your friendly neighborhood artists. I don't know. <laughs> I'm feeling ridiculous at this point. So I'm just going to get the heck out of here. <sighs> I'm gonna play me some Yu-Gi-Oh!